In this video, I'm going to discuss beam deflection. Additional videos and references can be found at svainvent.com. There are several different methods that can be used to calculate beam deflection. Here I list a few of them. The first is deflection by integration. The second is discontinuity functions. Both deflection by integration and discontinuity functions only consider the moment that is placed on the beam and how that would deflect the beam. The third listing is Costigliano's theorem. Costigliano's theorem is a lot more advanced than using deflection by integration and discontinuity functions. Instead, Costigliano's theorem can also be used to take in consideration of axial, torsional, and translational shear stress on the beam so that you can get a more accurate depiction of the beam's deflection. Due to the advanced form of Costigliano theorem, I will not discuss it in any further detail than what I have discussed now. All of the methods listed above require some form of calculus. For the most part, that calculus is pretty basic. And what I mean by basic is that you only have to deal with polynomial functions, which I will show in more detail in further slides. As I mentioned in the last slide, you will have to be able to do some polynomial calculus. Here I show you how to do an integral and how to take a derivative. To take an integral of a function, you would have x raised to some power p. So basically what I'm saying is you would have x, or maybe x squared, or maybe x cubed, etc. So to take that integral, you would have x raised to that power p. You would have to add 1 to that power and then divide by p plus 1. And then you also have to add on a constant. So if you were taking an integral of, say, x squared, you would have to add 1 to 2. So that would be x raised to the third. And then you divide by that. So it would be x raised to the third divided by 3 plus some constant. A derivative, on the other hand, is the opposite of an integral. Basically what I mean by this is if you took an integral of a function and then took the derivative of that resulting function, you should get the function that you took the integral of originally. To take a derivative, again you would have x raised to some power p, except unlike with the integral, when you take a derivative, you subtract 1 from that power p but you also multiply by that power p. So if you had, say, x squared again, to take the derivative of that, you'd have to subtract 1 from 2, but you would also multiply, multiply by 2. So you would end up with 2x as the derivative of x squared. Now what if you took a derivative of a constant? Now a constant would be like 3, 4, 5, etc., etc., Basically, if you take a derivative of a constant, any constant, it would go to zero, which is how you would get rid of that constant c in the integral if you took a derivative of that integral. When you use deflection by integration, you need to have generated a moment diagram and the resulting moment equation. Once you have that moment equation, you would then take the integral of that moment equation twice to determine the deflection. If you only take the integral of that moment equation once, then you're determining the rotation of the beam instead of the deflection. Now, due to taking an integral, you will also have some constant c's that you have to deal with. In this case, you would have two constant c's if you're dealing with one moment equation, considering you'll derive one constant c for rotation and an additional constant c for deflection. To find out what these constancies are, you need to know the constraints due to the boundary conditions placed on the beam. For example, a cantilever beam would have no deflection or rotation at the wall. So you could set your rotation and your deflection equation equal to zero while also setting x equal to zero if that is where you're starting to take your length.
Now I would like you to try to determine the deflection of this simple cantilever beam with a point load at the tip by using the flexion by integration method. To solve this problem, a moment diagram and its corresponding moment equation must be derived. Once that moment equation has been derived, it can be integrated twice to determine what the deflection is, which was done here. When it's integrated once to determine rotation, it would be f x squared divided by 2 minus f l x plus c1. And for deflection, it would be f x cubed divided by 6 minus f l x squared divided by 2 plus c1x plus c2. Now there are two unknown constants that need to be solved. Since this is a cantilever beam, the boundary conditions state that there is no deflection or rotation at the point that it connects to the wall, and x equals 0 at the point where it connects to the wall. Due to this fact, c1 and c2 equal 0. So the rotation equation becomes 1 over ei times fx squared divided by 2 minus flx. And the deflection equation becomes 1 over ei times fx cubed divided by 6 minus flx squared divided by 2. Now I want you to try to determine the deflection for this problem, where I already define the moment equations as moment m1 equals 2 over 9 times wlx1, which represents this part of the moment diagram, and moment m2 equals 2 over 9 times wlx2 minus w times x2 minus L over 3 times x2 minus L over 3 all over 2. To solve this problem, you're going to need to integrate both of these moment equations twice, which is shown here. Once those moment equations have been integrated, you need to determine what the constraints are due to the boundary conditions. For a simply supported beam, there would be no deflection at both of these points, so that would be x equals 0 and x equals L. And there would be no rotation where the maximum moment occurs. And the maximum moment occurs at this point right here, which would be represented by the second moment equation. To determine the maximum moment, you would have to take the derivative of the second moment equation, set that equal to 0, and then solve for x, which in this case, the maximum moment would occur at 5L over 9. So your boundary conditions would be as follows. Your first deflection will equal 0 at x equals 0, which will represent this first equation. The second equation's deflection will be 0 at x equals L. The second equation's rotation will be 0 at 5L over 9. And the first equation's rotation will equal the second equation's rotation at x equals L over 3. When you take these boundary conditions and put them into effect, C1 will equal negative 71 WL to the third divided by 2,187. C2 equals 0. C3 equals negative 115 WL cubed over 4,374. And C4 equals 55 WL to the fourth divided by 17,496. So the deflection 
for the first part of the beam, which would be this part right here, which is between the areas of x equals 0 and x equals L over 3, would be 1 over EI times 1 over 27 times WLX1 cubed minus 71 over 2187 times WL cubed X. And the second deflection, which represents this part of the beam, which is basically x equals l to the third to x equals l, would be 1 over ei times negative 1 over 24 times w x2 raised to the fourth plus 5 over 54 times wl x2 cubed minus 1 over 36 times WL squared X2 squared minus 115 divided by 4,374 times WL cubed X2 plus 55 divided by 17,496 times WL raised to the fourth. When you use discontinuity functions, you don't need to generate a moment diagram to solve for the deflection on the beam. Instead, you only need to know what the loading situation is on the beam. Once you know what the loading situation is on the beam, you would plug it into th these equations shown here to determine what the moment is on the beam. And then once you know the moment, you would just integrate that moment twice, like we've been doing before, and solve for the deflection on the beam. Using discontinuity functions, I would like you to try to solve for the deflection of this cantilever beam where there is a distributed load from x equals 0 to x equals L over 2 and a point load at x equals L. The first part to solving this problem is determining all of the forces on the beam so that the moment equation can be determined using the discontinuity functions. The first thing that we need to determine is the forces at the wall. And there is a force of WL over 2 plus F and a moment of WL squared over 8 plus FL. Also, the distributed load can be represented as follows so that we can show a distributed load all the way across the length of the beam. And once this has been done, using the discontinuity functions, we have a moment of m equals negative wl squared over 8 plus fl times x minus 0 raised to 0 plus wl over 2 plus f times x minus 0 raised to 1 minus w over 2 times x minus 0 raised to 2 plus w over 2 times x minus l over 2 raised to the second. Now that we know what the moment equation is, we, we can integrate that twice to determine what the deflection is. Due to the integration, we're going to have two unknown C constants. And to solve for those C constants, we would use the boundary conditions. And as discussed before, the boundary conditions for a cantilever beam are that the rotation is zero at the wall and the deflection is zero at the wall. And for this problem, we determine that x equals 0 at the wall. So c1 equals 0 and c2 equals 0. So the resulting deflection equation for this particular problem would be 1 over ei times negative 1 half times wl squared over 8 plus fl all times x squared plus 1 six times wl over 2 plus f times x cubed minus w over 24 times x raised to the fourth plus w over 24 times x minus l over 2 raised to the fourth. That concludes this video. The next video will be about statically indeterminate beams.